All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome the defending champion of the Valero Texas Open, J.J. Spallin. J.J., thanks for taking a few minutes for us. Um, just a few comments on being back to a place that's obviously near and dear to you, uh, maybe take you back a year. And if you could just kind of recap it a little bit and how special it was to win and be back here to defend your title. Yeah, it's great. Um, obviously, my first time defending on the PGA Tour, and um, it's nice to be back here very familiar place um it was strange coming here for media day back in february to be in the hotel and see the golf course but not even have my golf clubs so it's nice to have my golf clubs this week and the course looks very similar um it's in great shape and it's very uh reminiscent of how it was last year as far as conditions and stuff so it looks like we have a similar wind uh too so it's nice to be here i got my family again um valero and and the the team here that run the tournament have, have been so great to us and put us up in a nice place here at the Marriott and, you know, get to go to the, the water park with my daughter and, and spend good family time. And I think that's what this tournament provides for us players is to kind of uh, get a break from golf, you know, work in a little bit of golf too, but to spend time with family and, and have fun activities. So um, with all that going on, it's, it's nice to be here and the game's feeling good had a solid uh performance last week at austin for my first time there and um yeah just trying to build on that and uh, excited for the week ahead i was gonna ask about how you're feeling coming into the week you've had i think seven top 25 finishes in your top 10 last week in austin um what are you most confident with as your part of your game as you're coming into the week um i'm pretty confident with almost everything everything is pretty tight I don't think there's one thing that stands out that it's extraordinarily better than one aspect of my game um but we'll let the uh flyover go <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah um but no it's um everything's pretty tight and I think I'm managing my game well as far as mistakes and I'm not making big numbers uh hopefully you know knock on wood but um, everything's pretty tight and I've done a good job of, you know, staying in my lane and sticking to my strategies where, you know, I kind of stick to the game plan and, and hit fairways and hit greens. And I think the weeks where I putt well are the weeks that I, you know, can really contend. So, uh, I think if the putter heats up a little bit this week, I'll hopefully be back where I was, uh, last year this time. Okay. Well, you guys have a couple questions? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, last year I think you told us that, Yeah, it was, it literally, I've, I've heard the cliche, like the pinch me moments and am I, am I dreaming? And that's kind of what I felt for like the first time in my life going from the win here and then literally like flying over the next morning to Augusta and then registering. And it just happened so fast that, um, I felt like I was in a dream because I was there signing the registration book at the player office in at Augusta National and I'm just like I, everything's happened so fast like I can't believe you know not only did I just win my first tour event yesterday but now I'm here at the Masters already like preparing to play my first time at, at Augusta so um it's it's been it was it was definitely a fantasy as far as you know the whole experience but um you know I was super Super happy to be, you know, there and, and to also have a good week, too, a good showing at, at Augusta. And, um, you know, I, I know what I got to do this week to, to get back there. Uh, you've said, uh, Doug said, you know, you've had a pretty successful season, but you had a little dip kind of in January, February in there. What, what do you attribute that to? And have you figured out whatever it was that went wrong? Yeah, um, I just kind of, I, I got a little wrapped up in my golf swing and like my my coach has been hurt for like four months. He broke his pelvis in December. And so like he can't really travel. He normally travels out here every week and he's been pretty much like bedridden, can't really walk. He's not very mobile. So not, and so I kind of got off on my swing and then I started kind of trying to figure things out myself because he's at home and he can't really help, but sending videos here and there. And I think I just sort of got in my own way as far as trying to, perfect like my swing and why did it change from Maui and Sony to 
you know, L.A. and, and Bay Hill and those events where I was kind of just uh, going down the rabbit hole of trying to make my swing look like how it was uh, just a few months prior instead of just, like, playing with what I had, which probably would have ended up being um, better for me. But, you know, I'm, I missed a couple cuts in a row, back-to-back sort of swings, um, I think, on the West Coast, and then in Florida, but they're all by like a shot. So it was just kind of, kind of one of those things where if I saved a shot here and there, like it would have been playing the weekend and maybe salvage a good week, but I got it figured out. Um, had a good week off before Austin and trying to just stay out of my own way and, and, and hit good shots. And I think I'm back to that now. One more quick one. Uh, is there a planned trip on Monday to Houston? If, uh, if that's the case, uh, watch the Aztecs in the national championship game. Yeah. Um, for, uh, Unfortunately, I have my family, so my my wife's not a big basketball fan. Neither is my two and a half year old daughter, and this would be two weeks on on the road. Maybe I can kind of talk them into it, but uh, who knows? You know, hopefully, they make it to the final. I know they're they're in the final four, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But it's a pretty exciting time to to watch them to com- watch them compete just on TV in general. So, if I was able to be there, that'd be great. Sticking with the college athletics theme, Valero announced yesterday the Valero Collegiate Texas Open. The winner will get an exemption into this event moving forward. Just want to get your opinion on kind of the state of college golf and how many new opportunities are coming onto the radar for college players. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think Valero's doing a lot of positive things to grow the game and, and just outreach communities in general out here, and it's it's cool to see them kind of doing uh, something special for the college guys. And I think that's the best way to sort of showcase, you know, college golf, amateur golf. And I even remember um, back in when I was at San Diego State, there was this amateur qualifier. And it was an amateur. You could be, you know, a mid-amateur. You could be a college amateur. You could be a junior amateur. It didn't. There was no age uh, restriction. But it was a one-round tournament. I think the Century Club, I'm not sure if they still run the tournament, but they were – hosting it and the low guy at Torrey Pines South, like just this random one day tournament, low guy got a spot in the uh, farmers. So I remember those, you know, days and, and how nice it was to have an opportunity just to even have a chance to play, you know, uh, in the tour event. And so for the fact that Valero is doing that for college kids is really big. And I think, um, it, it, it was an exciting time for me because that was, like, something I would always prepare for, like, the most. Okay, like, this is my one shot to get into a tour event as a you know, amateur instead of having to do the whole Monday qualifying process and all that stuff. So um, I think it's great. Uh, following up on last week in Austin, another great week with shifty winds, Texas conditions. What is it about this place that you love? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I'm just comfortable here. I like I like the style of golf. I like the wind. I like the challenge of – you know, creating shots, um, greens in regulation are a premium, especially when it's tough conditions, and especially at a place like Austin Country Club and here. And in order to do that, you got to be in the fairway most of the time. So, um, and that's kind of my premium is accuracy and and greens and regulation. So, um, you know, hopefully I can you know keep keep at that this week and give myself a shot on Sunday. JJ, how are things different teeing off potentially, you know, here as a defending champion tomorrow versus uh, other tournaments? Does it change your mentality at all? Um, mentally, I don't think it, like, I don't think consciously I think of anything differently, but just being announced in the Pro-Am as defending champion, that felt really cool, and it felt really good because it's, you know, something I haven't heard in my in my career yet, especially on the PJ Tour. So um, I think I think there's nothing that I... I'm going to take away differently from being in that position. I'm just going to still go out and try to execute my game plan and, and see where, where I stand on the weekend and on Sunday. So uh, nothing definitely really, nothing really changes, but it's nice to have kind of that target on your back. That like you're, you're kind of the guy that, you know, is, is one of the favorites maybe at this, uh, this event this year. A lot of guys are in the position you were in last year where they know if they punch their ticket to the Masters with a win here. Does that sort of change the environment around the tournament or just the atmosphere for a player in this event, knowing it's that last chance? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's there's perks to every, every single win, but I think this one's kind of 
extra special and extra meaning because, you know, it's your last chance to get into Augusta. And uh, it's weird, last year I wasn't even thinking about that. And, and I know maybe that's kind of what mentally kept me, you know, in the present and not thinking ahead and not putting too much pressure on myself. So I'll try not to think about it too much. I mean, if I play great and win, then we'll kind of go through that whole cyclone of, you know, <laughs> of a mess, uh, I guess, in a good way of going from here to straight to Augusta. And, and, uh, but that, that would be awesome. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely extra meaning for, for being here for your last chance to go to Augusta. How do you size up the field for this event in general? A lot of guys have already kind of turned the page to next week. So, you know, how do you look at the guys who are here in this group that you're going to be playing with? Yeah, I think we still have a great group. I'm surprised that not, not many more players want to play the week before a major. I mean, given, granted, there was a WGC last week, and, you know, that's a long week as it is, and people don't want to make the Masters their third week in a row. But I still think it's a great field. I mean, the, obviously the tour is so deep, like anyone could win this week, you know, and not to count out any of the rookies or, or even, you know, the the veteran guys that are playing this week. I mean, it's, it's still up for grabs for anyone. I don't think – I think that maybe there are some slight favorites, but – I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's still 72 holes, and the guy that gets the, the ball in the hole the, the shortest amount of strokes is going to win. So um, good field overall still, and uh, I got a good group. Got Hideki and Ricky, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, light it up on Thursday, Friday. All right. Well, J.J., thank you for your time. We wish you the best of luck this week. Thanks, Doug. Stay right.